For our last project of the semester, we're going to be focusing on mandalas and how they relate to art. So the word mandala originates from a Hindu Sanskrit word, which means center or circle. It can be described as any form of circular geometric design that contains symbols of a person's inner self, guiding principles, and overall ideas about the world. The significance of objects within a mandala are conveyed by shape, size, and color. They can be abstract designs or have specific images of people, places, ideas, or things that are central to a person's life. So a mandala conveys a relationship of the center to its circumference. What I mean by that is it conveys a relationship from everything in the center to the relationship around it. So as a whole, it should represent something altogether. There are circular design layers in a mandala radiating from the center. The center symbolizes, um, which is beyond our understanding, that is what they believe, and they believe that the circumference or the outer part of the mandala reflects its potential. So here are some examples of living mandalas, okay? So the solar system is a great example of a living mandala because you have a center, the sun, and then you have these outer circumferences, which are planets and their orbits. Another example of a living mandala would be a snowflake because you have this center point and then everything that it radiates from. We're now going to watch a video on a Tibetan sand mandala. And I have had the pleasure of seeing one of these created in person and they are insanely detailed and they spend a long time on them. Um, and they do this um, as kind of a meditation practice. And so we're going to watch a video really quickly on what that looks like. Tibetan medicine and healing has always been crucial to the Buddhist path. So creating a medicine mandala is one way of healing the community, but also healing the environment. The word mandala is actually a Sanskrit term, a meaning container of essence. It is that sacred circle embodying some sacred essence within. Originally, they would have used powdered stones, powdered gems, things like lapis, malachite, and so on. Today, they use crushed marble and made into sand. Now, the colors are very important because they symbolize different attributes of the deities. Um, but in this particular one that we have here, it is all about the medicine Buddha and healing. And what they create is a heavenly palace all around him. Most of the monks have been in monasteries since the age of about seven. They would have learnt the actual art of painting a mandala in the first instance. But to actually make sun mandala takes about five years to train because it's a very precise art, tapping the sand out of these copper funnels into these intricate geometric designs. The prayers that the monks perform are to do with invoking the presence of the Medicine Buddha and inviting the healing power to enter the center of the mandala. And then throughout when they're actually performing, creating the mandala, they are meditating on that same thought. And for those people who are watching, every grain of sand will give one a blessing. This form of Buddhism is about developing your mind's potential, a way of transforming the mind. So the person who is using this in meditation would imagine themselves as the medicine Buddha in the center, and they would try and break down the barriers of their normal deluded life into the pure enlightened mind of the Buddha. A very important Buddhist belief is the impermanence. They don't believe that death is the end. It's just a passing phase. It's our essence that carries on but also that you shouldn't be attached to anything. So the idea of the destruction of the sand mandala 
is really putting it to bed, if you like. We return to the elements, so too is the sound mandala return to the elements. So now let's talk about mandalas as an art form. So mandalas should have the following characteristics. They should have a center. They should have a point that um, is contained in a circle. They should have some form of symmetry. In this instance, we're using radial symmetry and they can either be simple or complex. So for our project, we're gonna be creating a dot mandala using acrylic paint. And here are some examples. So here's what we need to do today. The first thing that you need to do is you need to find an image online of a dot mandala that inspires you, okay? You need to save that image to your Chromebook. If that's as far as you get today, that's totally fine. But you have to save that picture to your Chromebook so that you have it to look at every single day, okay? You also need to be able to zoom in on your photo. For instance, if I'm really wanting to look at what all this detail looks like on this mandala, you're gonna wanna be able to zoom in on it, okay? Then you're going to draw your mandala outline on a black piece of paper. I'm going to post this worksheet um, on the Google Classroom for you, but I'm also going to create a video in just a second on how to do this um, so that you guys know what you're doing today. So this is a mandala that I'm going to use as my reference. And so as you can see, there's a center point and then there's all of these other points coming off of it. So if I were going to draw my project, what I would do is I would start by finding the center point, which I will show you in just a second. And then you will draw the straight lines first before adding your circles. So I'm gonna show you what that will look like when you start that in your project right now. So I have posted mandala drawing directions in your Google Classroom, but I just wanted to show you the tools that you're gonna to need to draw your mandala today. And then you can always go back and fix it um, when you need to when you're working on your project. So I showed you just a second before which mandala I'm going to be drawing. So if I were going to do that, what I would want to do first is find the center of my paper. And you're gonna to wanna to do this regardless of what type of mandala you're drawing because it's really important to find the center. So your paper is going to be 12 by 12. So I'm gonna make a mark at six here and then I'm gonna measure the other direction, six inches. Okay, so this is the center of my paper right here. Okay, and it's important that we know the direct center so that our mandala has that nice radial design all the way around, all right? So the mandala that I chose is kind of a snowflake design. So I'm gonna start by drawing those lines first and then I'll add my circles. If you have any straight lines, I recommend doing those before you start adding your circles. If you don't have any straight lines, then you will just draw your dot and then start drawing your circles. Okay, so that's kind of the outline for that. Now, when you create your circles, you're gonna use what we call a compass. I know that you guys have used these before, but what you do is you will line up the, the kind of goldish ring on your center dot. So you're gonna need two pencils for this, okay? I'm going to use a pen because that's what I have right here, all right? That's going to hold your place. And then depending upon how big you want your circle, you're going to put it in one of the dots following along here to create your circle, okay? So I'm just gonna demonstrate you guys will make your circles depending upon how big you are and you just kind of swing it around and that's how you draw your circles, okay? Now, once you have a circle, if it's a little messed up, you can go back and fix it. Well, that will give you a nice, perfect circle. So I really recommend going in before you start drawing your circles and figuring out how many circles you're gonna need, okay? Um, I'm gonna do another one right here. And as you can see, it got kind of messed up on this edge again. Okay, but I recommend you going in and seeing how many circles 
that you need before you start making your circles. I mean, you can always go back and erase them. That's no big deal. But you want to know how many rings you're going to need before you start the project. Okay. Now, say your mandala has some circles and then it comes out and it starts having like shapes like this. We can add that later when we add our dots. I just want you to map out where all of your rings are going to be. So in just a second, we're going to take a look at the uh, photo that I was using again so we can kind of talk about what those rings will look at look like. But once again, you're going to line up that middle ring on that middle dot and then you'll just use the various dots along the edge of the compass to create those circles. Okay? So that's how you will create your mandala template today. And lastly, so I showed you how you find your center dot. I showed you how to make those lines. And then I showed you how to make those rings. So if I were making rings on this one, I would make a ring for this right here. I would make a ring for this right here. I'd make a ring for the next one. So you would have one, two, three, four, five rings of circles that you would want to make. Okay. Now, and then I talked about how you might have some shapes that go around like this. I wouldn't draw that with your compass. You're more than welcome to if you want to, but I would just go back in later with our dot tool and add those extra little embellishments later. So once again, you'll start with your center dot. If you were doing a mandala like this, then you would draw your straight lines and then you would draw each of your rings. And in this case, there would be five. So that's how I would approach it. If your mandala just has rings and no straight lines, then you'll just start with your rings right away.